to The Independent Pianist. My name is Cole Anderson. For all my viewers in the United States, I hope you had a calm and restful Thanksgiving day. I also got a chance to have a much needed breather, um, but I still have a video performance for you today. We have even more Mozart today. I've been on a bit of a streak lately on Mozart. I've just been having such a wonderful time playing all this really delightful repertoire. And I realized that my previous two Mozart uploads were both pretty dark, portentous selections from Mozart's opus. And I feel like I should balance that out a little bit with something a little more bright and cheerful, uh, especially since we have a holiday here in the States at any rate. So I have two pieces for you today, and to start with is the Rondo in D major, uh, Kerschel 485. Uh, this rondo is kind of akin to, to the more famous rondo in A minor insofar as it represents another playful experimentation with rondo form. In the rondo in A minor, each episode was expanded into a quasi-sonata form construction. In the D major rondo, on the other hand, Mozart devises a combination between sonata form and rondo form. And this in itself was not uncommon. There are many other sonata rondos from the 18th century. Uh, I don't know of any that are exactly like this one, though. So usually a combination between sonata form and rondo form would look something like this. So basically similar to a standard sonata form, except that an extra statement of the A theme is snuck in in the tonic at the beginning of the development. And remember that the whole idea of a rondo form is that the episodes contrast materially in character in tonality, and also melodically from the refrain. So even if there is some motivic connection between the A and the B sections, for example, as is frequently the case, still, overall, there will generally be a significant change in character so that the sections are clearly delineated. Well, that simply doesn't happen here. Not only is there a close melodic similarity from section to section, with the same four note descending line featuring in every section, but the opening idea is also repeated verbatim in each of the sections at one point or another. It's almost like a joke. This rondo form can't get away from its main theme. We do get the tonal outline of sonata form, but even that is obscured by the repeated excursions that Mozart adds into the recap section. You know, usually we would assume that we're on the home stretch when we reach the recap in a sonata form, but that's not the case here. Mozart has several nice surprises still in store for us. Why does Mozart allow this theme to dominate every section of the piece? Uh, well, maybe it was a kind of a way for Mozart to pay homage to the composer of the melody. This melody is not actually original to Mozart. This melody originally occurs in a quintet in D major by Johann Christian Bach. The youngest of Johann Sebastian Bach's musical sons, Johann Christian Bach had died in 1782 and Mozart wrote in a letter to his father shortly afterwards, I expect you know that the English Bach is dead. What a loss to the musical world. So perhaps this little rondo was Mozart's way of gently paying tribute to a figure that he really respected and admired. Mozart met Johann Christian Bach for a brief period in London around 1764 when he was on his famous European tour with his father and sister, and they really hit it off at the time. Johann Christian Bach's style perfectly exemplified the Gallant style that was becoming popular at the time, and which this melody perfectly encapsulates as well. It's elegant, it's charming, well-proportioned, the focus is on an expressive, singable melody. Now, that was the Gallant style in a nutshell, and Johann Christian Bach had an enormous influence on Mozart in that regard. Mozart had strong early influences from the Bach family, but not so much from Johann Sebastian Bach early on. Uh, he certainly knew about his music, but didn't study it as much as he did the music of Carl Philipp Emanuel Bach and Johann Christian Bach. It wasn't really until the 1780s, under the influence of one of his patrons, the Baron Gottfried van Swieten, that Mozart really began to become interested in the legacy of Bach, Johann Sebastian Bach. And there are a large number of works that reflect his growing interest in complex counterpoint. A famous one would be the Kyrie movement from the Requiem, of course, but also the C minor mass, the various transcriptions of Bach fugues for string quartet, his own fantasy and fugue in C major, and of course, this jig. The influences of Johann Sebastian Bach here are obvious in some ways. I mean, obviously it's a jig, which 
would have closed any of Bach's many suites, whether it would have been his six French suites, his six English suites, or the partitas. Um, the piece also starts with something remarkably like a three-part fugal exposition. It does not continue in a strictly fugal style, but it is highly contrapuntal as well. Then there's a possible melodic similarity as well, which is certainly up to debate, but if true, it would be a wonderful testament to Mozart's sense of humor. There may be an intentional resemblance between the main theme of this jig and the subject from Johann Sebastian Bach's magnificent B minor fugue from Book One of the Well-Tempered Clavier. This resemblance is particularly noticeable when the theme of the jig has a brief statement in B minor in the development section. So here they are side by side, uh, with the jig slowed down for your comparison. So my thanks to the pianist Peter Walker for pointing out this similarity. As far as I know, he's the first person ever to mention this uh, quite recently. I linked to his webpage where he talks about it below. I think he uh, posted that in 2017. Another possible influence is also from Handel. Uh, several musicologists have pointed out a similarity between the theme from the Gigue of Handel's suite in F minor, so I also linked that in the description box for your review. Uh, but otherwise, let's just get on to the music. So thanks again for watching this video. Uh, please enjoy the performances. Until next time.